think we're good now. Yep, no dropped frames. Okay, there we go. Hopefully everything's coming through now. Just had to restart it there, it was messing up on me. So this is going to be ultra wide because I've just got it running uh, down, downscaled off of my native resolution, which is not your normal resolution. So sorry for the bars most of you will have at the top and bottom. But okay, let's uh, take a look at the ship. In different games. Figure I'd hop back in and mess around with this ship, being it was looking to be pretty interesting, but it's certainly got a few issues. Is the audio coming through fine or is it breaking up for you guys? Hello, Galva. Hello, Hugo. Okay. Hopefully voice meter doesn't mess up this week like it did last week. So, this Herc Dreadnought is the new promo ship. And, you know, just looking at the initial stats, I don't know if this ship honestly justifies being a promotion ship it has some issues which i'll get into as we progress through things so i'm just going to start with the build i have on this and it's a 4-3 weapon layout so i'm running a cannon torp build using all the phaser stuff got a sensor linked wide arc phaser prolonged phaser and then the phaser quad cannons with the agony phaser torp. Uh, deflector, standard colony. Uh, it's the fourth one on the list, then I re-engineered it. Then I've got the prevailing fortified engines. These are the f competitive rep ones that trigger off of hitting heals. These sh These engines are extremely OP. I'm surprised they haven't been nerfed. It's uh, basically a mini evasive maneuver is whenever you hit a heal. And there are other versions that trigger off of other things. Warp cores, you know, standard elite fleet one, then the competitive shields. Standard, like, turret mix, I guess. Just a uh, normal phaser turret, the trilithium enhanced, and then heavy biomolecular. Um, I could run the two-piece for the Trilithium also, but for now, I do not have the console on for it. I'm just messing with some things. Uh, standard devices, only one that really matters is the energy amplifier from Beams Crafting. Thanks for checking, Hugo. Yeah, I'm just worried about the voice meter messing up again, but it seems fine so far. As long as my computer doesn't crash, we'll be fine. Um, consoles. So in the engineering one, this first console, this is the console off of the ship itself. The energy nullifier disperser. So you get plus 15 to physical kinetic resist, 15 control X, 15 drain X, and then there's a clicky on it. And I've already used this clicky and I can tell you that this console is extremely trash. In the ISA I did earlier, I got 525 DPS out of this console. There are many better consoles you could use over this. The only benefit to this console, I guess, is that it can be used on any ship. Then I've got this thing set up as a bit of a, like a cannon tank type thing. It's a bit weird, but, um, so I've got a bunch of heal consoles on it. So I've got the protomatter, 
the Kabali Riff. And then the other two engineering consoles are the Domino and then the Weapon Sensor Enhancer. The Weapon Sensor Enhancer is there for the accuracy rating to help with the accuracy overflow for the cannons. And then I have the DPRM on because every build out there should have the DPRM. It's simply an OP console. It's unfortunately 300 million for feds, but it's the best console in the game. Gives a massive damage buff and heal while it's active. And it's also in a two piece with the few console options, but the best second console you can get in the set is the Point Defense Bombardment Warhead. This is off of the NX. That's buffing up the phaser energy torp, and it's giving me a little bit of crit chance. And then the two piece, as we all know, gives the 33% phaser and disruptor plasma weapon damage. Uh, Hugo, I had three of the boxes sitting on uh, one of my characters, three of the promo boxes. I opened 100 packs a few weeks ago and got three ships. I was going in lots of 20 after I'd opened some lockboxes. I was having a lot of luck that Sunday, but since then I've not really won many ships, not even Infinity. The last three, or I'm sorry, the last, uh, I didn't go over all the attack consoles, so three of the attack consoles are colony ones. These give a heal when you hit, um, for this version it's energy weapon firing modes, so... Scatter Volley, Fire at Will, Rapid Fire, Beam Overload, Surgical Strikes, stuff like that. Only ones that would affect energy weapons. So on this build, that's why there's a random Beam Overload. Because Beam Overload has a lower global cooldown than Fire at Will. So you can proc it more. Now I've got three of these consoles on. I am sacrificing the crit chance that you'd get with the Spire consoles, but I'm using these for the heals. Because with a few of these consoles on, the amount they heal is quite OP. And the last attack console is the counter command for the two-piece with the heavy phaser turret. Yeah, I got really, really lucky with opening those. I, uh... I largely stuck to a uh, timing that I found to work, like, uh, I discussed it a bit in that lockbox video I did last year, which some still debate about, um, I understand why, it's, the, the timing stuff with lockboxes, it's, you know, not for sure, and it's not always going to work, but there are certainly times where it feels like you get a bit more lucky, and... In this case, I think I did a little bit maybe on stream. I don't think I did the promo ships, but a uh, time that I had found working was one minute after. And I know during one of the streams I did within the last month, someone did that and they got a promo ship while I was still doing the stream. So I went and tried a hundred boxes like the Sunday after, maybe a week after that. And uh, I was doing lots of 20 after I'd opened a bit of lockboxes. Once I pulled a lockbox ship, I would wait a minute, open 20 in, of the promo packs, and I did that five times, and I got three ships. So, worked pretty well. But getting back on track here, uh, then I've got the Elite Herc Swarmer Fighters. These things suck so far. I will say that in the ISA I did earlier, they average 500 to 1000 DPS per pet. So not the best pets ever. Okay, let's look at my bridge officer layout. I'm running this as a cannon torp setup with a little bit of tanking. I actually need to change this. There we go. So. Attack Team 1, Chemo 2, Scatter Volley 2, Beam Overload 1. Once again, this, the Beam Overload is there just to proc the Colony Attack Consoles. Attack Pattern Beta 1 and Torp Spread 3. Now, the Bridge Officer layout has some issues. Um, for me, I always use Oxidabat because it's 
the best cooldown reduction method overall for non-science builds. And it procs the cold-hearted trait. So I always use that and this build is no exception. Mercy Powered Engines 1, Emergency Powered Weapons 1, Ox to Bat 1, Ox to Bat 2, and Reverse Shield Polarity. Then for the science seat here, I've got Psy Team 1 and Hazard 2. The reason for the Psy Team is it's just another heal to proc the competitive engines. There's not much I could slot there that would get me much DPS. Yeah, this is not the most ideal layout, but it's working. Skill tree, standard. I've shown this before. It's just a tack ult setup. Nothing special. Um, and I have the wrong specializations on. It should be Intel primary, strategist secondary. Uh, traits. I'm not going to go over every last one here, but cold-hearted, withering barrage, supercharged weapons, emergency weapon cycle, and promise of frosty. Um, yeah, there's nothing really unique about the trait. So let's go over the issues with this ship. It only has one specialization seat. That's issue number one. I'm trying to think of what other promo ships have only one spec seat, and I think the only ones are the Alachi ones. So the Alachi Sheshar, that only has one seat that has a specialization on it. This ship, the, most of the promo ships have two spec seats. They'll have a Lieutenant Commander plus Lieutenant, or Commander plus a Lieutenant or Lieutenant Commander. Look at the uh, Zentar, the Enterprise J, you know, all those. Those have two spec seats. For what tier of ship this is, there's no reason it doesn't have a secondary spec seat. I don't care what the spec seat is. It should have one on either the Science Lieutenant, which would be ideal, or the Lieutenant Commander Universal. One of these needs to have a spec of some sort, even if it's just another Miracle Worker, or not, not Miracle Worker, if it's another Command Seat. Even a Command Seat, you could have Concentrate Firepower there, or like a, what is it, Rally Point Marker in this Lieutenant slot, if this were. You know, that there's so many things they could do there, but they've decided to only give this ship the one specialization, it just doesn't make sense. That, that's the biggest issue with this ship. The second is that the pets suck. Now, if I look at the full, like, hanger of these, let me pull up my last parts here, hold on. Let me make sure this is visible for you guys. I mean, the, these elite her warmer fighters. It's probably a bit small for some of you guys. I apologize for that. Um, but look at this. The most of these, but then none of them break a thousand. Okay, so each hanger of these has six uh, swarmers out. So, they're not frigates, they're not supposed to do amazing damage, but I would like to see them ideally doubled in their damage potential. I just am not really a fan of them averaging between 500 to 1000 DPS. That's not that great. Uh, it's a lot of numbers, but you just want to look at the pet and the DPS and damage if you want to. Like just that there, you look at that, it's a bit disappointing. You know, I'm not expecting the most out of these pets, but 
I'm not expecting them to perform this poorly. And then we have that console. The console off that thing. You'd expect it to, ideally, at least be competitive with most other decent consoles doing like 2 to 5k or something, but no, this thing's 525.39 DPS. It's this energy diffusion, energy nullifier. Now I'm going to do another ISA here in a minute or two and show you guys, you know, the parse after that, but it's just disappointing. Close SCM, but that's fine. Uh, let me look at the chat here. Uh, Skullin, you sell whatever is in that pack for the most. Though the trait boxes, those change all the time. Uh, Hugo, command spec ability, power from life support. You know, I tried that right after season 13, and it is nice. The issue is it's making your captain abilities take longer to cool down because it extends the cooldown on things. So Ox to Bat counters it for bridge officer abilities, but it does not counter it for the captain abilities, which that's just too much of a hit. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's... The ship doesn't need to be pay to win, like, you know, super, super OP, but it should be better than it is. I would give it a secondary specialization seat, as I said. I would make this console do a lot more damage. I would probably go out and say, take the numbers on this console, you bump it up five to ten times. I don't think it would hurt for this console to do... Upwards of, you know, two and a half, five thousand DPS. That wouldn't be bad. It needs to do something a lot more than it is currently doing. Or, if they don't want to up the damage, up the uh, uptime on it. Like, if they're only out for 15 seconds. So, well, I guess it doesn't matter because they go to the target and explode, but... I don't know. Then lower the, the uptime on it. Something. Just reading chat so there's not going to be any uh, game sound. Okay, looks like you got most of the questions. But yeah, it's... that This console, definitely buff it. Buff the damage, and... I think it'd be fine if this console had a... 60 second cooldown, but that that wouldn't fit in with how they do the rest of the consoles. We'll probably get a new lockbox with all the Herc stuff in it. I, I can't imagine this is the only Herc ship we're going to actually get as a playable one, so... Maybe we'll have a three-piece with that that lowers the cooldown. They've been doing that a lot recently. But still, in the meantime, I would like to see the damage on this buffed up significantly. Five to ten times minimum. Um, and then we have the trait. <laughs> now, this trait is absolutely terrible. I haven't used it yet, but you don't have to to know how bad it is. To nearest foe within 3 kilometers and up to two other foes in the 45 degree arc, you deal physical damage to them and then you repel them. So, basically, you hit an engineer or command ability, and the stuff around you, or in front of you, gets pushed away from you. And it can do that every 10 seconds. So, these traits and things where they push things away from you at random, like, w when you're not fully controlling it, because if you're spamming a bunch of engineering powers, y you're not exactly going out and controlling when stuff's getting pushed away. Because you just got stuff on the spam bar. So that's just going to happen at random. This is not a trait you're really going to get much use out of. Yeah, there, there's no reason for it to have the two specs. Or just the one spec seat. So I'm going to beam back down to ground. And I'm going to go into an ISA. We're going to parse it see how bad it does.
Yeah, this is probably the worst promo ship. Like, I, I think that honor previously went to the Amory. The Amory was okay, but it just, it has its own issues. This thing just, uh, it's disappointing. It's a good looking ship, especially with the Lucari shield. And it's already crashed on the exchange. Hello. Um, so what do I think about the them announcing the next season so soon? Well, if it wasn't this week, it was going to be next week at Star Trek Las Vegas. So they are announcing things really early. It's a bit disappointing. If you were someone that wanted them to do a lot of Jem'Hadar content, I would say this is really, really sad news because... You know, they they did this little bit of Jemadar stuff, and that's it. It's They're now on this full focus towards Discovery. I do not like seeing that we're going to have another, uh, like, mini faction. It's going to be an Agents of Yesterday type faction by the looks of it. Just based off the initial things that they were saying, and I'm not very happy about that. Let's see, this shouldn't take too long. Three in the queue. This thing is highly overtanked with all the stuff I have on it, so hopefully I don't die. It'll be very sad if I die. You know, as I've said before, what I want to see them do is go back and, you know, take care of some of the existing issues in the game instead of constantly pumping out new stuff. I understand that they need to constantly pump out new things to, you know, keep bringing in new players, but it's still very disappointing to see that queues are in the state they are, and just overall the end game has some severe issues. I'd like them to take care of those issues, you know, give us better rewards, Make it so we want to run queues. Give us unique rewards for actually running them. And I went too far.
That was a much better run. Had more DPS in there. Let's take a look at the bars. Uh, I didn't even pull really the threat there. Eclipsed it. Oh man, look at this. So there's two listings for that uh, console here now. The one off of this ship, 386 DPS and 240. So, right around 620 there. That console still needs a dead large buff, 5 10 times. So let's get it done, Cryptic. That's just sad. Okay, let's take a look at the pets. So 700 to 1,000 basically. The average for them right around 800. And ship sold, that's nice. I want to take a look at my crit chance. Even without the Spire consoles, I got so much crit chance from other sources. I'm still 40s. 30s to 40s on most things. That's pretty good. The torp was really low though. 24%. That's really weird. Let's take a look at the overall parse again. Uh, that that run, yeah, had more DPS than an average pug. So around two minutes. That was a good run. Okay. Y'all know what it's time for. Let's see what them promo packs are going for. Watch me burn a billion EC. Yeah, I'm not impressed with the uh, the ship overall. It's it's just got too many issues, especially with as we've said, the you know the what tier of ship, what type of ship it's supposed to be. It's underwhelming. I'm gonna step above keys and I'm gonna do promo packs, but I'm not gonna open them yet. I'm gonna wait for 38, 39 after. And then I'm going to. I am price per unit. So it's just that there's a bunch of these cheap individual listings. Yeah, the the, the pets. There's six of them out per hangar bay. So, you know, th those types never do too well, but... I no, I, I just expect more. Yeah, I'll beam up to the ship to take a look at it, and we'll take a look at its interior. I'm just waiting to... ...to refresh so I can buy more of these. How many did that get me? 75? If 
I don't get a ship out of those, I'm going to be very upset. And as I said, I'm going to wait till 38, 39 after. Yep, about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. Yeah, the ship has a very high HP. Um, I think it's the highest HP in the game, I'm not sure. I think the... The next closest ship would be the uh, Vorgon Carrier. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I I'm pretty sure this actually is even above that. Okay, here's the bridge. Let me... Okay. So, this is it. This is the bridge. It's sort of weird. But, yeah. Got this big ball here in the center. Some stuff over here. And some more stuff over here. Not really that exciting. Like, the, the default, let me see, I don't have the box on me anymore, but it was, yeah, 1.7, 68,000 at level 60. Let me beam up to space and, uh, actually, let me grab a Jevonite quick. I think, uh, yep. Okay, so I've got the Lucari shield on the ship. Let me take that off. It's a neat design in some ways. Oh, I don't know. There's parts of it I like, parts of it I don't like. I think it's, you know, the spikes on the inside are sort of neat. But I don't really like the default skin that much. Not the best light to show it off in. Let me, uh, fix that here. Go somewhere I can actually show it off better lighting. Nah, I didn't talk about it at the uh, start of the stream there, Galen. It's uh, I I'm talked about it somewhere else in the stream here, but I think it's a bit too soon to you know say too much about it. I don't mind more discovery content. I know some don't like discovery, but I think it could be interesting. I'm just not happy about having another mini faction. Just gonna be a clone of the agents of yesterday, basically, with discovery theme stuff, and I really don't feel like making another character. So, this is the default skin. I don't have many, uh, like shield visuals to show here, but let me show what I have. So, it's a competitive. Head of shields never, you know, the best thing ever, but you see here, Tholian. 
you get them like low quality folium textures there. Don't like how like low quality that looks at points. Let's see Mako. Not much of a fan of that. Dyson. It's not the worst ever. It's better than the others. I don't have many shields to show though, so let me just go to the one that I know looks pretty decent on this. This is what I had on before. This is the Lucari one. I think it's the best shield that I've got that I can use on this thing for the visual. Makes all these little things glow. So the ship has these spikes on the inside. On each of the three outer like wings or whatever. But this is the Lucari Reputation Shield. A lot of people get this shield just for the visual. Because it gives you that Tronish type look. The black and white one. And that was the uh, Dyson Regenerative. The Dyson Reputation one. And shield, let's see here, or a hole. So me just sitting here in in a space. I am sitting at a hundred and thirty one point nine k hole. If I pop an ablative, Jevonite, one fifty four k. So yeah, this this ship, if you spec out, go with all the stuff to, uh, can't change specs in a fleet map, forgot about that. Go with all the plus hole cap stuff, you should easily be able to get this over 200k if you run Threatening Stance on, which I don't even have that on my tray here. You should be able to get well over 200. Um, people were able to get over 200 before Victory's life on the Vorgon carrier and a few other ships, so... I don't know. 300k? If you, like, really spam all this stuff. All the plus hole items. Be able to get a nice high crazy amount. Nope, there's no way to make the Minus Repel a... Or uh, the repel on minus repel on the trait. It's it's simply locked to the repel. So this trait means you're pushing things away from you. Uh, Drew, 300k should be possible if you stack every item for it. Especially if you go on a fleet map with the uh, the plus HP items from competitive rep. Let's see. Still working on the, the competitive stuff for the mines. I've not been doing uh, my red alerts daily though to get enough mark. Another day or two and I'll be there. But these batteries, which ones are they under? Long. Okay, so the increased max shields and hold hit points, these are the only ones you really want to use from the competitive rep, but in PvP maps, these are very nice. Um. Sometimes even it bugs out and it'll let you use two of these smacks hit point or any of these at a time, so um yeah that that should lead to some really high fun numbers. See you, Drew.
So one of the other things they announced with the uh, Discovery season or expansion, whatever they're going for, is uh, they're going to do a tier, a sixth tier on the reputations. That'll be a bit interesting. Um, like to see what they're going to do with that. I mean, with that and them saying that they're renaming queues and them having talked about you know, looking at some things for queues earlier this year, I'm hoping that they actually do something like with the rewards especially. Hugo, I haven't messed with most of that stuff. Honestly, most of the stuff I've done in STL recently was while I was on the stream. I really have not been playing this game that much just over the last few weeks because I had the computer issues there, then I had net issues, and then when I am online, it's the last few weeks, it's either been me working on my school stuff or playing other games with friends. So. Robert, they announced it. Time to see if I have won or lost. Ouch. That's a billion EC. That hurts. How to lose one billion EC. That is unlucky right there. Terrible. Well, I didn't do the flying high mission. I uh, I just used low buy, so I should have just did the mission, you know, daily. But ouch! That that that's very painful there, though. Seventy five promo packs and no ship. That stings a bit. It's fine. That makes up for the good, good luck I had that week. See what the intel's at. The pension. I just need to post a lobby shit. Gotta recover some of that easy. Okay, and next time.
Well, let me just say, uh, because that, that, that moment there stung a bit. That just goes to show that you can't trust lockboxes in gambling. You, you, you win sometimes, but you do not always win. With 75 promo packs, that is very unlucky. I want to actually go and take a look here. I just want to see what the other uh, promo ships are at right now. Bug ships under a bill, centaur. You know, these a lot of these things around that. Okay. Hold on, let me see what this ping on Discord is. Checking something quick. Anyone got any more questions about the uh, Herc Dread? Like anything that I didn't go over? Other than the fact that it has some big issues. Oh, fun time. I don't know. That's that's a specific setup that I haven't really messed up, messed with much. The the what you're talking about, Robert. I don't actually have the Junior Scout ship. I can get one, but it's just a bit different from what I'm used to running. But speaking of the, uh, oh, yeah, no problem, Robert. Um, but speaking of that Trenur Scout ship, if people want one of those on the Fed side, just uh, get in touch with me and I can give you access to it. Um, that's the giveaway I was talking about last week in one of the videos I did. Well, the only non-stream video. Um... As I talked about this briefly on stream last week, the Breakfast Club recently had its fifth year anniversary and we're doing an internal and external giveaway. The external one um, is if you want a fleet ship, your fleet doesn't have access to it, we're giving away like 100 ships. So for people that want that, just send me a mail-in game, get a hold of me on Discord, and we'll get you taken care of. Oh, the Admiralty card. Yeah, let's take a look at that. I have not noticed the innate ability. Um, but I haven't really been looking too much for it. I think to really see that, you'd need to go into something where you're pulling more threat. Maybe an Elite Q. Um, but yeah, it's, 
it's not very noticeable for the type of content that I'm doing so far. Which is just the advanced Borg stuff, because you just breeze through that stuff with the DPS. Uh, let me pull up this Admiral Fleet card. So I think I missed a question earlier. Pull this up so I can go find that question. Up here's the Herc Dread. And I'm gonna go look and chat. Okay. I don't see the question. There, there's one I know I missed, but I can't find it here. Uh, DFR, just send me a message in game at SpencerB96 or get a hold of me on Reddit. Or not Reddit, Discord. Reddit works too. Just anywhere. If, just send me your at handle I can chat to if you want. Just type it in and I'll get a, get a hold of you in game. Time is it? Okay, the question I was asked earlier, um, something about the, like, one of the twin phaser arrays or whatever, those, those work perfectly fine. They're no different than regular phasers, it's just a change in the color. Um, yeah, and then, what can you suggest for Romulan, Klingon side, what ships and what kind of weapons are best to use? So for Romulan, it's still the scimitars, the tactical or engineering variants are the current meta, um, but if you get the scimitars, the, the T6 ones, you want to get the three pack, um, just because the consoles are good, except the science one. The, the science console sort of sucks. But the TAC one and Psy, or TAC and Inge ones are good. And if you don't have the timeline stabilizer, using the science for the three piece is a good idea. What weapons? Like, if you want to go absolute pure min max, use the uh, Terran. Disruptor, Dual Heavy Cannon, or Beam Ray, and then Spiral Wave Disruptors. And if you do go with a cannon setup, use a Wide Arc alongside the Terran. Um, so you'll want to do like the Terran, the Wide Arc, and then Sensor Link Dual Cannons. Dual Cannons are generally better than Dual Heavies because... Uh, you get more procs from stuff like Chemosite, and if I recall, they drain a little bit less power. Or there was something with them that was making it so they had more power overall. Can't remember. Yeah, the Cardassian three piece I wouldn't use. I was using the what was it the mobile torp platform? Yeah, this thing right here, and it was just performing terribly. Let me see what my cooldowns are. Eleven seconds, of course. We'll go into another ISA.
Oh boy. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. I just messed up and hit Kabali really early. I'm missing fire in my mark on my tray, I believe. <laughs> Look at my HP from Threatening Stance. 244k. Oh man, 244k it was there briefly. Now the Threatening Stance stacks or uh, something's dropping off. My HP is lowering. But yeah, you, you can get this HP on this really high up with enough buffs. Okay, let's take a look at that overall. Let me pop OBS. Just total damage in 91.6%. It handled it well for what it was doing. Okay, I need preferences. Realized too. Groups of the same type. Didn't even realize he added that in. Okay. 
Let's look at the energy nullifier this time. Six hundred and forty DPS, basically. You might have, Hugo. I I wasn't paying enough attention to it. I'm going to have to go back and read the dev blog on it just to like to reread to understand exactly how that mechanic works because I haven't actually looked into it too much. So that energy nullifier, 640 DPS, yeah, that's just abysmal. So the two bays of pets did 12k, so I don't. Got them grouped up here. Um, so about 6k DPS per hangar bay. I don't know, I, I'd like to see that up a little. 50% at least. possible. Let me see here. Web online. Eclipse, you want to do a quick 1v1 just to test that? Yeah, because that'd be easier. I remember. I think it's two. Yeah. While this loads, I'm going to check the uh, news post to see the details on the mechanic. Okay, we're going to test to see if these do the uh, focused assault. Yeah, they're they're doing focused assault. That's really really nice. Wait for them to all get over there and stack. 
I'm thinking they have a 30 to 45 second cooldown on the focused assaults. Trying to recall them. What's your opinion on playing the Dill Exchange? Yeah, the Dill Exchange can be profitable if you play it. Know what times to do stuff with it on. I'm going to wait for this one to dock. I'm going to launch them all. Twenty three. So right now my weapon's at 2940. Just go with 3300 basically. Wait for next focused assault to pop up on him. I want to see them stack the focused assault some more. Focus assault buff is nice. They're not popping it up much though. Oh, let's see what this does. The energy nullifier. Oh. Look how slow they move. Those need a speed buff. If you don't have things like literally right on top of you, no wonder that console's doing so poorly. Okay, reactive shield in front. That triggered really fast, it looks like. Well, the Focus Assault debuffs, they're running it at, like, the, the global cooldown of that. So, what is that, like, 45 seconds, I think? Um, so those are more of, like, mini recluse pets in a way. I need to move a little to clear the anchored debuff. So it's giving a little resistance, but not much. I have a 20 second lockout, and it doesn't take long for that to trigger, it seems. Just gonna keep moving to try and prevent anchored. It's really hard to say how much this is taking the resistance up. It's it's not much. See that the massive jump up is from a blade of shell. So this is only taking me up like Two to five percent, depending on the category. It's, it's really not much. 
So the innate's really nothing to write home about. So after, it looks like either four or five stacks on a side will trigger the immunity that lasts for just a few seconds. Then it has, a, what was that, a 20, I know it was over 20, was that a 25 second lockout? Go with the rear shield facing. It's four stacks. 30 seconds. The lockout is 30 seconds. I'm going to go right up to him and hit this console now. Yeah, it's very disappointing. Oh, this launch energy nullifier is buffed by... Damage buffs. So that console was doing 600 and something DPS and it's being buffed by alpha. Talk about disappointing. I am wondering if those nullifiers are classified as mines. They move like mines. So, I guess that, like, wraps up that testing. I'm going to go look at the uh, dev blog again here. Hugo, I'm looking at this. It's saying on the, like, for the innate ability, each stack grants the starship increased all damage resistance rating to further damage being received from the same direction. I don't know. It's... It's really weird. It's basically four hits and it triggers the immunity and then it locks out for 30 seconds. I mean, we need to test it in some other queue or something, but that just doesn't seem that good because it triggers so fast. It's just, I don't know, based on that, it just seems extremely disappointing. see here how far am i on this thing The linear red alert's taking a bit because I guess I didn't queue for Not because it was still had me in the queue group. Actually, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna. Let's 
just finish leveling this up quick. Yeah, DFR, if you give me just your at handle, I can find your character name if you're online. Or if you want to just PM, I'll, I'll put it in here. In just send me a message in game to that and I'll uh, get you an invite. You, you have to leave your fleet if you're in one to get a fleet shipped out from another fleet. So make sure you have arrangements set up if you need to do that. Okay. Argala. Sub nuke. Just remove it from all NPCs. Or remove it from the game altogether. Your auto fire is good. I should have this on advanced elite is not worth it for the XP gains.
troll for PvP though, it's... I don't think a ship like this would do good in PvP right now. I, I haven't done PvP since Victory's Life, in the f f few months leading up to it, but... A ship like this would, in any serious PvP, would likely be an easy target. I don't know, it being a command engineer ship might be able to do like a zombie tank setup, but this isn't the most ideal thing ever for PvP. Focused assault really stack? You know, honestly, I don't know. I'm gonna have to guess yes, being they put it in like this, but... Focused assault stacking was never something I really messed with much. For anyone also unaware of how to level up a ship fast, go into a patrol, Japori, Argala, set it to advanced, and uh, war warp out of the map as soon as you complete wave 4. Do not go to and do wave 5 because Wave 5 gives you the reward and puts you on the 30 minute lockout. Yeah, that immunity just triggers way too fast. And the 30 second lockout is a bit of a joke. Two thousand, I think I can get that. Killing these guys. No, oh, I can't. Okay. Those guys aren't quite enough to get that last little bit because the boss, big boss, doesn't really give you XP. So, when you're looking at firing cycles and interrupting stuff, but, you know, that that's something that can certainly impact. I think the most noticeable is going to be, you know, the distribution shield, which is why, I, which is the biggest issue with the Hilbert spacebar keybind is the distribute shields on it. That can really mess you up. Um, but, like, with what I run, I honestly don't really pay much attention to it. I just have everything on the sp the spam bars, and I just let it go. the The only thing I would say to really be careful with is your tack team, side team, inch team, because they have that long activation time. But for most other things, you don't really notice it. Uh, Leafin, any amount of dill can really get you active in the dill market. I mean, it's just a matter of playing things, you know, right. So, when we look at the dill market, you want to buy, you, you want to use your dilithium to get zen, 
when there is a phoenix pack. That is the lowest points nowadays. You convert all of your dilithium to zen then, and then you sit on the zen until there's like an R&D promo pack event like we've got on right now, or a new ship out, or a new pack. That's when the prices are going to go up. So, you can certainly make a profit doing that, but you got to have, you know, a few million to really, really get large amounts out of it. But still, even with a small amount, you can always make something out of it. But, like, the starting amount, it's hard to say, because it's, it's really sad. You can start out at any point. Get this last uh, thousand XP or so. Yeah, I'm not even going to need to go far into this. I kill this first group here and I'll have tier 5. And then I'll just warp. There we go. Yeah, it's it's always waiting till you have a large amount, but uh, you got to do it with what you have available. Okay, let's see here. Let's take a look at how bad this trade is. We already know it's bad, but how bad can it be? Oh, what's the name of it? Repulsive. Repulsive is correct for the trait. It is repulsive. Buff by EPG for the physical damage. Control X to buff the repel. So it's got a 10 second lockout only if there's a target that it hits. If there's no target that it hits, it does not trigger the lockout. But still, I, I don't know. Like, it's really difficult to think of a build that would benefit from this trait. See, so what's the ISA cooldown? Might do one more here, yep. One more ISA, and then I think I'm gonna call it for today.
nice to try and get in a position where you can hit both attack cube and gate, but I can't right here. I'm gonna go for the attack cube now. I could have hit that console. I didn't even hit the energy nullifier there, did I? Dang. Take a look at that parse. Um, let's see here. Thoughts on the crit severity reduction for normal content? I think that's good. Um, you know, if in normal, stuff shouldn't be hitting too hard. So. I think it's good if they want to try to make things easier. They were saying that post-Victory's life, the amount of deaths in Qs has went up by 40%, so... Anything to help people is good. Come on, let me respond to this guy. Always fun to respond to those comments. Let's take a look at the uh, detailed parts for that. So, I did actually manage to hit the energy nullifier. Oh man, it did one, one point, almost one point two k DPS that run. Wow. Where did I activate it this time? I don't remember. Um, that is surprising though. I'm glad to see it did something more this round, but it still needs a buff because it still sucks. Take a look at the pets. 14.4k for the two hangar bays. It's not bad at all, but it still could be a little bit better. I've not tried that leaf. Um, let's see here. Dragon Talon. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up everything with this ship. Went over all the issues and everything with it a few times. Um, I will be streaming again tomorrow. For those that want to ask me more... STO questions. I am thinking about changing the, the format and how I do the Ask Me STO questions because I've gotten some feedback on that that I'm, I'm thinking about. So, when do I usually start these broadcasts? I've been trying to do between noon and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um,. So, yeah, it should be on. I'll probably start the stream tomorrow around noon. 
Central Standard Time, so that would be like 20, 19 and a half hours from now. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. That was just a weird, compared to the previous runs, that one was a bit better. This guy trying to recruit me to his fleet. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay, guys, I'm going to hop off for today. Um, I will just end this saying that that giveaway that I mentioned, so that if you want a Lucari scout ship or any other fleet ship um, on the Fed side on PC, we are giving some away. So if you want one, just give me your at handle, the specific character and at handle, and uh, we'll try to get it time sorted out to get you in and get you that ship you'll have to bring the fleet ship modules but we'll give you the store access and the ship provision so that you can have access to buy the ship with your fleet creds and ship modules thank you all for watching see you tomorrow